Ladies and gentlemen, this is where the fun begins. Here I have everything set up and ready to create a crowd simulation. This is Drake, a character I downloaded from Mixamo. Yes, I know, it's an unexpected name for someone like him. But this is Drake. I have used the agent node to import Drake as an agent. I've also added a couple of run clips, two different layers, one with a sword and another one with an axe. And I've also set up the foot locking with an agent prep node. You can see here these blue markers on the toes and the heels. Let's close this node chain with a null, as we always do, and call it out underscore the name of your character. The time has come to generate a crowd. Go up to the OBG context. Here I have a geometry node called agent setup where I'm setting up my agent, and another geometry node called layer setup, where I've set up the props, the sword and the axe. I'm going to create now a new geometry node called crowd setup, because here is where I'll generate my crowd. Press tab and create an object merge node. What's the purpose of this node? As I said in the first video, these geometry nodes are like folders or containers that store more nodes. We'll use the object merge node whenever we want to bring into our geometry node something from another geometry node. It's like if we were copying those nodes and pasting them here. In the object one parameter, press this button and select the node you want to bring. Here is our agent. And now, here comes the magic. I'll create a crowdsource node. Connect your agent to the first input, the one asking for agents, and as soon as you display the node, you'll see an army of orcs. What is the crowdsource doing? This node creates points in the space and puts an instance of our agent on each of those points. By default, the crowdsource creates 20 points. We can see it on the parameters window, number of agents, 20. I could put here one, just one agent, or 100, or whatever number you want, as long as your computer can handle it. I'll go with 25 here, that's a good number. If we press play, we'll see our agents with the animation we have activated as clip preview. Go to the agent setup, Look at the agent clip node and you'll see that this set current clip parameter is turned on. Please note that the apply clip locomotion is turned on too. That's why our agents are moving forward as they run. If we turn this off, our crowd... Wait a second, <laughs> there is an intruder here. This one with the yellow circle is the one I have selected, which is the agent setup node. I'll turn this off too. Now that we have turned off the clip review, our agents don't have an animation to play. And if we press play, nothing will happen because there is no animation running. Let's leave it like this for now. In the crowdsource node is where we control how our crowd will look like at the beginning of our simulation. In addition to changing the number of agents, we can also modify the width and length of the area holding the points. In case you don't know how to change these values, just middle click on the value, choose an increment and move it to the left or to the right. And for going back to the default values, place the pointer on the label, the name of the parameter, hold control and middle click. In the layout parameter, we can choose between a random distribution of these points or information. Very useful when working with armies. We can control with the sliders how many rows and columns we want and the space between them. I'll set it back to random and let's focus now on this last section. The initial state is the animation your agent will have when the simulation starts. By default, it's empty, and I usually leave it empty. But if you want your agents to start with a specific animation, open the list and pick one of these. 
The problem is that this will apply the same animation to all our agents. That's why I leave this initial state empty. With the scale parameter, we can change the size of our agents. The initial velocity determines the direction in which the agents will move. We can change this velocity by axis, left to right, up and down, front and back. We'll skip the heading parameter for now, and the last one, the up parameter, controls the vertical axis of our character. This will normally be 1 on the y axis. Imagine there's a vector pointing upwards from my character's head. That will be its up vector. If I change this value to minus 1 instead of 1, my agent's head will be pointing downwards. But the best thing about the crowdsource node is the randomized tab, because here we can add variation to our simulation. We can randomize basically everything. The agent primitive is the agent we are using. In this case, I don't need that because I only have one agent. The initial state is the same thing we saw before. Remember when we left the initial state empty? This is why. By activating randomize initial state, we can choose several clips and let Houdini randomize them. For instance, I'm going to put here my first clip, make sure to remove this walk one that comes by default, and my second clip. These two clips will now be assigned to my agents randomly. Press play and you'll see that some of them are holding the sword with two hands and the rest with one hand. Right now, all my agents are playing these clips starting at frame 1, the first frame. But if I randomize the clip time, each agent will start the animation from a different frame. If all my agents start at frame 1, they will move exactly in the same way, as you can see here. Let's turn on the randomize clip time and see the difference. Now each agent is starting at a different frame. We've broken this pattern and now it looks more organic. By increasing the random clip offset, I can break this pattern even more but I find that the default 0.5 works fine. We can also randomize the current layer, which is very useful when working in scenes like this one, with armies and weapons. You can tell Houdini that you want some of your agents to have the axe layer and some others the sword layer. Every randomize has a weight parameter that determines the priority of that particular line. If we leave it like that, 1 and 1, Houdini will go 50% axe, 50% sword. If I wanted to decrease the amount of axes by half, I would set its weight to 0.5. Let's set it back to the default value. I can also randomize the scale since not all my agents will have the same size. The default value, I think, it's too much. Some agents are huge, while some others are very tiny. When working with human-like characters, the randomness value should not be very high. 0.05 will work in most cases. The difference is now more subtle. And these three last parameters, initial velocity, heading and up, are the same we saw in the previous tab. You can randomize those two. Well, once you are satisfied with the layout, close this chain with a null node and name it out underscore crowdsource or whatever you want. You probably noticed that when pressing play, your agents will play the animation but they will stay in place. This is because the crowdsource node doesn't have an option to apply the locomotion channels to the agents. When they inherited the animation 
from the clip review, they were able to move because the agent clip node had an option to apply clip locomotion. But because we turned off the clip review, our agents no longer have this locomotion channel applied to them, so they stay in place. In the next video, we'll see how to apply this locomotion channel again so our agents can move in space.